Hey, what's up guys? This is Haterade. Let's take a minute to delve deeper into the minimap, specifically picking the right map for the right job. Now, in real life, there's different maps for different jobs. If I want to find my way around my town, I'll pick a street map. If I'm going to a national park, for example, I might look at a topographical map. And if I'm going from state to state, I'll look at a highway map that shows multiple states. Battlefield works the same way. Sometimes I need a street level map, sometimes a satellite map will be better, and sometimes I need zoomed out, while other times I definitely want to see is zoomed in and see as much detail as possible. Now which map you want is largely dependent on what your role is for the particular match, which is something we'll go in at a later date, but for now, let's look at some basic ideas. Broadly speaking, the maps in Battlefield 3 can be broken down into three different categories. First you have your decidedly urban environment, such as scene crossing or metro. You also have your non-urban environment, such as Caspian Border or Gulf of Oman. And finally, there are more hybrid maps, such as Kirk Island, where you're likely to be engaged in both urban and non-urban environments. In your urban maps, you really want the street view. You're not really going to run across, you know, open fields with random rocks that you have to see behind and stuff like that. Everything is more or less linear, and you can get away with using the simple street view. In non-urban environments, it's very helpful to use a satellite view. That way, instead of looking at an open blank space on your minimap, you can see that that guy's really in a rock end, so you can orient yourself and pay attention to the rocks rather than all the green space around it. In a hybrid map such as Karga Island, where you can just as easily take contact from the desert as you can the urban environment, it's useful to use a hybrid map. Now that you have an idea about what type of map to use, let's turn our attention to the zoom level of the map. When on the ground, it's generally a good idea to use a close-in map, that way you can see all the guys in good detail. Where the zoomed out minimap shines really is when you're using armor. Now we'll go over this at a later time, so you'll just have to trust me here, but really a tank's job is medium to long range engagement supporting objectives and taking out enemy armor. So it's useful for the driver of tank to use a zoomed out minimap, that way he can see threats further in the distance and figure out where the attack's coming from. Meanwhile, the tank's gunner's job is to keep people from RPGing and C4ing the tank, so he needs a close-in map so he can see threats as it presents themselves. The zoomed out minimap is also helpful for vehicles because you can see when enemy vehicles spawn in. This wasn't in the basic video, but anytime a vehicle spawns in, it appears on the minimap white. So if I'm trying to diagnose threats and I'm in a tank, I know I want to worry about the other guy's tank. So if I see a white tank in their spawn that disappears off the screen, that means that there's a tank there, someone hopped in it, and that tank's moving. I need to move the intercept. Also, in an attack chopper, there are two things that you need to worry about. Enemy air assets and the mobile AA. So if you have your minimap zoomed out, you can often see when these threats spawn in and you won't be blindsided when there's a helicopter up your backside. So these are some of the issues that you need to take into consideration when picking your minimap. Hopefully this will make you a better, more complete battlefield player. See you on the battlefield. 